Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can use Premiere scripting to automate the razor cutting tool inside of Premiere. This will basically allow us to run a script that takes in some time codes and then cuts a specific audio or video track according to our choosing uh, at these given time codes. And this can then be expanded upon to do tons of cool stuff like um, auto editing, um, certain intervals of cutting if you need to rapidly cut into certain numbers of frames and then you can move and delete things after that um, but we're just going to be going over how to do this today you can download the script of course for free in the description just go to the github link um, but we're going to go ahead and just write this from scratch we'll create a new premiere script file i'm using extend script just because it's way easier uh, to plug in for me to uh, premiere with it and we're going to start by creating uh, a variable called our time codes. This is going to be an array of times. We're just basically going to provide it with a whole bunch of different seconds. Uh, so we can say these are going to be the cut times, maybe one second, 2.7 or 6 seconds, uh, 4 seconds, 7.3 seconds, and maybe 10.1 seconds. And we're just going to then loop through this array, typical JavaScript stuff. Uh, using a variable t for timecodes.length increment t. And for basically each of these time codes, we're going to use a built-in function or method to uh, cut a given a specific track. But first we need to get the time code in a different format than just the seconds. The way we're gonna do that is using a built-in method to Premiere Scripting as well as a time object. So we'll say var time is equal to a new time object. If you're not familiar, of course, time objects have time.seconds and time.ticks. There's a tutorial right here on all about that. Uh, this is Premiere's time object, and it will allow us to then uh, give this to another method and then basically convert the seconds. So we'll say time.seconds, because we're converting our time from seconds to something different, uh, we can basically grab time codes t, the current time code, which again, this is formatted in seconds, and we're turning it into a premier time object by changing the seconds property of the time object to uh, the actual seconds value. I've never actually explained that in super depth, but I just wanted to real quick. Now to continue forward, we need to use a little bit of searching to get to the get format, uh, time dot get formatted method. This is what we're going to use to get the right formatting of the time for the actual razor slice method we're using. We need it as an argument. So what we'll do is we need to provide a time object, which we have just created and applied our seconds to. So we'll say time dot get formatted. And then we need to provide it with the frame rate object and a time display. A frame rate we can get just by referring to the sequence, uh, sequence settings and then video frame rate. So what we can do is say app.project.active sequence. If you already have a sequence variable, just use that. Then we'll say get settings. This will get us the sequence settings and we'll get the video frame rate. Then we need to get the display format. This is something I was unfamiliar with at first. Uh, so I had to look it up in the guide. It's here under the listing for sequence settings. Um, and it is called video display format. And it has this very specific string uh, for what the time code is and whether or not it has, you know, drop frames and things like that. So to get that, you simply need to call the same thing. We'll get the active sequence, app.project.active sequence, word wrap, uh, we'll get settings. And of course you could variableize all of this to make it a little bit shorter. Uh, then we'll say dot the name of the property, video display format. And that will get that directly from the sequence for us. Now, let's go ahead and just uh, write this to our extend script console. And we also need to create a variable called timecode uh, so that we can set this converted value to some variable. And let's go ahead and run this. And you can see it's now been converted to this sort of uh, typical Premiere format. And that's exactly what formatting it needs in order for us to now run the razor method. So if we search for razor, you can see we have QE sequence razor and QE track razor. Um, we're going to basically just be using QE track, which gives us much more fine control. Um, and as you can see, like usual, it has very 
unreadable uh, arguments in the extend script guide, but that's all right. First, we need to uh, enable QE by saying app.enable QE. And actually, all we need to provide to this razor method is the time code we just created in this particular formatting. So what we're going to do is grab the active QE sequence. So we'll say QE.project.get active sequence. Then you can decide what uh, track you want to deal with. So you can say dot get video track at, and then we need to provide an index. So we could give it index zero if we just wanted to cut here on video track one. Uh, likewise, you can also do get audio track at and individually deal with just the video track or the audio track and have a bit more control. Um, and then finally, we need to say what I said dot razor. Yes, because we have a QE track object, which is this bit of code. And now we need to say dot razor. And all we have to do is provide our time code variable, which again is just these seconds converted to this particular uh, time code for Premiere. And we provide that and that's exactly what it wants in order to cut. So now what we can do, make sure we have a nice uh, full clip here. Confirm we're here on video track one and let's go ahead and run this. And just like that, we've instantly cut all of those clips. Again, uh, we can change this to also do both. So we can say get track uh, audio track at. And then we can uh, cut both the audio and the video tracks. And with this little bit of code, we have a lot of power now. We can basically do things like auto editing, super specific mathematical interval cutting for our videos, and a whole bunch more creative things. Again, the code is down below in the GitHub link. Make sure you check that out. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe down below, and follow us on all the links down below as usual. This has been how to use the Razor tool in Premiere Scripting, and we'll see you guys next time.